Hello viewers of the channel. Today I'd like to tell you about the School of Athens. The School of Athens, which is an Italian Scuola di Atene, is one of the most famous frescoes by the Italian Renaissance artist Raphael. It was painted between 1509 and 1511 as a part of Raphael's commission to decorate the rooms now known as the Stanze di Raffaello in the Apostolic Palace in the Vatican. The Stanza della Signatura was the first of the rooms to be decorated and the School of Athens representing philosophy was probably the third painting to be finished there after La Disputa which is representing theology it's another fresco on the opposite wall. And the Parnassus, which is representing literature. The picture has long been seen as Raphael's masterpiece and the perfect embodiment of classical spirit of Renaissance. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, give you an introduction about uh, Raphael as an artist, Raphael or Raffaello Sanzio da Urbino. He was born in 1483 and died in 1520. Known as Raphael, he was an Italian painter and architect of the High Renaissance. His works is admired for its clarity of form, ease of composition, and visual achievements of the new platonic ideal of human grandeur. Together with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, he forms the traditional trinity of great masters of that period. This is Raphael, and here we have the fresco representing the Disputation of the Holy Sacrament. In Italian, La Disputa della Sacramento, or simply Disputa, which is a painting by Raphael. And it was painted between 1509 and 1510 as only the first part of Raphael's commission to decorate with frescoes the rooms that are now known as the Stanze di Raffaello in the Apostolic Palace in the Vatican. At the time, the room was known as the Stanza della Signatura and was private papal library where the Supreme Papal Tribunal met. And here we have the fresco, the Parnassus, which is painted also by Raphael. And the most important that Raphael made these three frescoes. The School of Athens representing philosophy, the Parnassus representing literature, and the Disputa representing theology, the School of Athens. Let's first give some information about Athens. Athens is the capital and the largest city of Greece. Athens dominates the Attica region and is one of the world, world's oldest cities, with its recorded history spanning over 3,400 years and its earliest human presence starting somewhere between the 11th and the 7th millennium BC. Athens was a center for the arts, learning and philosophy, home of Plato's Academy and Aristotle's Lyceum. It is widely referred to as the cradle of the Western civilization and the birthplace of democracy. 
largely because of its cultural and political impact on the European continent and in particular the Romans. Back to our main subject, which is the School of Athens. We have here in front of us a masterpiece of an artist representing more than 20 figures, more than 20 scholars, philosophers, personalities that had affected the human thinking over centuries and mostly of from the Greek era or Greek. Actually, what is the most amazing about this fresco of the School of Athens are the central figures, which are in the architecture central vanishing point. We have here in the middle, as we zoom, the two undisputed main subjects, Plato on the left and Aristotle, his student, on the right. Both figures hold bound copies of their books in their left hands while gesturing with their right. Plato hold Timaeus, Aristotle his Plato is depicted as all gray, wise looking and bare foot. By contrast, Aristotle slightly ahead of him is in nature, manhood, handsome, well shod and dressed with gold. And the youth about them seem to look his way. In addition, these two central figures gesture along different dimensions. Plato vertically, upwards, along the picture plane, into the beautiful vault above, Aristotle on the horizontal plane at right angles to the picture plane. We are going to talk about each one separately. Plato, which was born between 428 and 423 and died between 348 and 347 BC. He was a philosopher in classical Greece and the founder of the Academy of Athens, the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. He is widely considered the most pivotal figure in the development of philosophy, especially the Western tradition. Unlike nearly all of his philosophical contemporaries, Plato's entire work is believed to have survived intact for over 2,400 years. Others believe that the oldest extant manuscript dates to around 895 AD, 1100 years after Plato's death. This makes it difficult to know exactly what Plato wrote. And here we have this copy of the portrait made by Tilanion about 370 BC for the Academia in Athens from the sacred area in Largo, Argentina. This marble head or loony marble head representing Plato. And if we come to Aristotle, which was born 384 BC and died 322 BC, he was an ancient Greek philosopher and scientist born in the city of Stagira, Chalcidais, on the northern periphery of classical Greece. Along with Plato, Aristotle is considered the father of Western philosophy, which inherited almost its entire lexicon from his teachings, including problems and methods of inquiry, so influencing almost any form of knowledge known to the modern world. And here we have this bust of Aristotle made of marble it is a Roman copy after a Greek bronze original by Lysippos from 330 BC. The alabaster mantle is a modern addition. Going back to the fresco and going back to the central figures of Plato and Aristotle, the most amazing actually is the gesture with the right hand. Plato is pointing up 
and Aristotle pointing forward. Actually, the, the two are unique and the two are representing the two main philosophical schools on our planet. Plato is representing idealism and Aristotle is representing realism. And actually, many interpret the painting to show a divergence of the two philosophical, the two philosophical schools. Plato argues a sense of timelessness, which is the idealism, while Aristotle looks into the physicality of life and the present real, which is reality. And as we can see, it is in the heart of the sea. And actually, what all the figures surrounding Plato and Aristotle are either idealistic or realistic. And now we come to the sitting or the entourage or the architectural building, which has all of these figures. The building is in the shape of a Greek cross. If here we consider this at the center of the cross, this is the head, this is the feet, and the right wing and the left wing. And here we have a shape of the Greek cross. Also, the building, which some have suggested, was intended to show a harmony between pagan philosophy and a Christian theology. Pagan philosophy represented in all, all of these figures of philosophers dating back before Christianity and Christian theology because actually the fresco is inside a church. The architecture of the building was inspired by the work of Bramante, who according to Vasari, helped Raphael with the architecture in the picture. Some have suggested that the building itself was intended to be an advanced view of St. Peter's Basilica. There are also two sculptures in the background. The one on the left is of the god Apollo. As we zoom to the left, This is the god Apollo, god of light, archery, and music, holding a lyre, something like a sitar or a harp. The sculpture on the right is Athena. Here we have Athena, goddess of wisdom, in her Roman guise as Minerva. We will start with the group of persons to the left. The first one, zooming. The first one we will start with is this one here. We can see only his head. He is Zeno of Kition. Zeno of Kition. Born about 334 BC, died about 262 BC. Was a Hellenistic thinker from Kitium, which is Cyprus now, and probably of Phoenician descent. Zeno was the founder of the Stoic school of philosophy, which he taught in Athens from about 300 BC, based on the moral ideas of the Cynics. Stoicism laid great emphasis on goodness and peace of mind, gained from the living of life of virtue in accordance with nature. It proves very popular and flourished as one of the major schools of philosophy from the Hellenistic period through the Roman era. And here we have Zeno, Zeno of Hitium bust in the Farnese collection 
Nablus. Now we come to the second person, this one here, which is dressed in blue with a diadem on the head. This one is Epicurus. Epicurus, born in 341 BC and died 270 BC, was an ancient Greek philosopher who founded a school of philosophy now called Epicureanism. Only a few fragments and letters of Epicurus's 300 written works remain. Much of what is known about Epicurean philosophy derives from late followers and commentators. And this is a Roman marble bust of Epicurus. And this one is Boethius. Boethius or Anicius Manilius Severinius Boethius. Boethius was a Roman senator, consul, magister, officiorio, and a philosopher of the early 6th century. He was born four years after Edoacer, deposed the last Roman emperor and declared himself king of Italy, and entered public service under Ostrogothic the Great, was later imprisoned and executed him in 524 on charges of conspiracy to overthrow him. While jailed, Puthius composed his Consolation of Philosophy, a philosophical treatise on fortune, death, and other issues, which became one of the most popular and influential work of the Middle Ages. And this painting is showing Pothius teaching his students. There are also suggestions that this person is also representing Anaximander. If he is Anaximander, which was born around 610 BC, died around 546 BC. He was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher who lived in Miletus, a city of Ionia in modern-day Turkey. He belonged to the Milesian school and learned the teachings of his master Thales. He succeeded Thales and became the second master of that school where he counted Anaximenes and argu arguably Pythagoras amongst his pupils. And here we have this relief representing Anaximander in Rome, Roma, Museo Nazionale Romano, and it is probably Roman copy of an early Greek original. This is the only existing image of Anaximander from ancient world. Here we have this man with a moustache and a turban. From the dress, very clear that he is of Arabic origin or Muslim origin. This is actually is Averos. Averos or Ibn Rushd, Arabic Ibn Rushd, full name in Arabic, Abu Walid Muhammad Ibn Ahmad Ibn Rushd, also known as Ahmad Ibn Rushd, born on the 14th of April 1126, died on the 10th of December 1198. Often Latinized as Averos, was a medieval Andalusian Arab Polymath. He wrote on logic, Aristotelian, and Islamic philosophy, Islamic theology. The, Ma the Maliki school of Islamic jurisprudence, psychology, political theory, the theory of Andalusian classical music, geography, mathematics, as well as the medieval science of medicine, astronomy, physics, and celestial mechanics. Ibn Rushd was born in Cordoba, 
Al-Andalus, present-day Spain, and died at Marrakesh in present-day Morocco. His body was entered in his family tomb at Cordoba, the 13th century. Philosophical movement in Latin Christian and Jewish tradition based on Ibn Rushd's work is called Aviruism. And here we have a statue of Ibn Rushd in Cordoba, Spain. Now we come to this man writing in a book. This is Pythagoras, Pythagoras or Pythagoras of Samos, was an Ionic Greek philosopher and the eponymous founder of the Pythagoreanism movement. His political and religious teachings were extremely influential in Magna Graecia and exerted as founded impact on his philosophies of Plato, Aristotle, and through them, Western philosophy. And this is a bust of Pythagoras of Samos in the Capitolina Museums in Rome. And this one here, this figure with a helmet and Roman dress with a sword, this one is supposed to be Elisipiades or Alexander the Great. If he is Elisipiades, Elisipiades, son of Plinias, Elisipiades was a prominent Athenian statesman, orator, and general. He was the last famous member of his mother's aristocratic family. And this is a painting showing Elsipiades being taught by Socrates. If he is not Elsipiades and he is Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great or Alexander the Third of Macedon, born 20 or 21st July 356 BC and died 10 or 11th June 323 BC, commonly known as Alexander the Great, was a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon and a member of the Argid dynasty. He was born in Pella in 356 BC and succeeded his father Philip II to the throne at the age of 20. He spent most of his ruling years on an unprecedented military campaign through Asia and Northeast Africa. And he created one of the largest empires of the ancient world by the age of 30, stretching from Greece to Northwestern India. He was undefeated in battle and is widely considered one of history's most successful military commanders. And this is the Alexander Mosaic, first century AD, about the first century AD, ancient Rome floor mosaic from the house of the phone in Pompeii showing Alexander fighting King Darius III of Persia in the Battle of Issus. Now we come to this man dressed in reddish brown robe, an old man. This one is Antithenes, born around 445 BC and died about 365 BC. He was a Greek philosopher and a pupil of Socrates. Antithenes first learned rhetoric under Gorgias before becoming an ardent disciple of Socrates. He adopted and developed the ethical side of Socrates' teachings, advocating an ascetic life 
lived in accordance with virtue. Later writers regarded him as the founder of Sinaic philosophy. And here we have a portrait bust of Antithonus found at the villa of Cassius at Tivoli. Now in Museo Pio Clementino. Other suggestions suggest that this man is Xenophon and Xenophon or Xenophon of Athens, born about 430 BC and died about 354 BC. He was an ancient Greek philosopher, historian, soldier, mercenary, and student of Socrates. As a historian, Xenophon is known for recording the history of his contemporary time. The late 5th and early 4th centuries BC, in such works as the Hellenicia, about the final seven years and the aftermath of the Peloponnesian War, 431 to 404 BC. Xenophon is an authority on Socrates, about whom he wrote several books and dialogues, the Memorabilia and Apology of Socrates to the Jury, which recounts the philosopher's trial in, in 399 BC. And this woman here, dressed in white, it is actually unknown or maybe the Fornarina as a personification of love. Fornarina or Margarita Lutti, la Fornarina, the baker's daughter, was the mistress and model of Raphael. The story of their love has become the archetypal artist model relationship of Western tradition. Yet little is known of her life. Of her, Flaubert wrote in his Dictionary of Received Ideas, for Narina, she was a beautiful woman. That is all you need to know. And here we have, in the middle of the scene, Venus, as you can see here, he is shown young, with blonde hair, and this rope of light blue, is Venus of Sphetos or Espinus Socraticus, sometimes but now rarely written as Askinus or Askinus, born around 425 BC and died around 350 BC. He was the son of Lysanias of the Daemon Sphetos of Athens, and he was in his youth a follower of Socrates. Historians call him Askinus Socraticus, the, the Socratic Askinus, to distinguish him from the more historically influential Athenian orator as named Askinus. And here we have, as we can see, this engraving with an imaginary portrait of Aeschines, dating back to the 19th century AD. And here we have, in the middle of the scene, this man with a book, maybe he is Parmenides or Nicomachus. If he is Parmenides, Parmenides of Ilia, of the late 6th or early 5th century BC, was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher from Ilia in Magna Graecia, Greater Greece, including Southern Italy. He was the founder of the Iliatic School of Philosophy. The single known work of Parmenides is a poem on nature. 
which has survived only in fragmentary form. In this poem, Parmenides described two views of reality. In the way of truth, a part of the poem, he explains how reality coined as what is, is one. Change is impossible and existence is timeless, uniform, necessary, and unchanging. In the way of opinion, he explains the world of appearances in which one's sensory faculties lead to conceptions which are false and deceitful. He has been considered to be the founder of metaphysics or ontology. And here, as we can see, this is a bust of Parmenides discovered at Velia, thought to have been partially modeled on a Metrodorus bust. And if this man is Nicomachus, Nicomachus, Nicomachus of Gerasa, he was born about 60 AD and died about 120 AD. He was an important ancient mathematician, best known for his works, Introduction to Arithmetic and Manual of Harmonics in Greek. He was born in Gerasa, in the Roman province of Syria, now Gerash, Jordan, and was strongly influenced by Aristotle. He was a Neo-Pythagorean who wrote about the mystical properties of numbers. And here we have an illustration of Nicomachus and Plato depicted as inventors of music. The one on the left is Nicomachus. And here we have this one in the middle of the screen. This one is Socrates. Socrates was born about 470 BC and died about 399 BC. He was a classical Greek Athenian philosopher credited as one of the founders of Western philosophy and as being the first moral philosopher of the Western ethical tradition of thought. An enigmatic figure, he made no writings and is known chiefly through the accounts of classical writers writing after his lifetime, particularly his students, Plato and Xenophon. Other sources include the contemporaneous Antithenes, Aristophus, and Aeschines of Phytos, Aristophanes, and a playwright. A playwright is the only source to have written during his lifetime. And here we have a bust of Socrates in the Louvre Museum in France in Paris. And here we have this sitting figure. Maybe it is representing Heraclitus or Michelangelo. Heraclitus. Heraclitus of Ephesus, who was born about 535 BC and died about 475 BC, was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher and a native of the city of Ephesus, then part of the Persian Empire. He was of distinguished parentage. Little is known about his early life and education, but he regarded himself as a self-taught and a pioneer of wisdom. From the lonely life he led, is still more from the lonely life he led and still more from the apparently riddled and allegedly paradoxical nature of his philosophy and his stress upon the needless uncautiousness of humankind. He was called the obscure, 
and the weeping philosopher. This is if he is Heraclitus, but if he is Michelangelo, Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni, or more commonly known by his first name, Michelangelo, was born on the 6th of March, 1435, and died on the 18th February, 1564, AD. He was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet of the High Renaissance, born in the Republic of Florence, who exerted an unparalleled influence on the development of Western art, considered by some of the greatest living artists during his lifetime. He has since been described as one of the greatest artists of all time, despite making few forays beyond the art, his artistic versatility was of such a high order that he is often considered a contender for the title of the archetypal Renaissance man, along with his rival Leonardo da Vinci. And here we have a portrait, as you can see, this portrait of Michelangelo is by Daniel da Volterra. This man in the, in the middle of the screen is Dijonese. Dijonese, also known as Dijonese the Cynic, was a Greek philosopher and one of the founders of the Cynic philosophy. He was born in Sinope, an Ionian colony on the Black Sea, in 412 or 404 BC and died at Corinth in 323 BC. Agenis was a controversial figure. His father minted coin for living. Agenis made a virtue of poverty. He begged for a living and often slept in a large ceramic jar in the marketplace. He became notorious for his Philosophical stunts such as carrying a lamp during the day, claiming to be looking for an honest man. He criticized Plato, disputed his interpretation of Socrates, and sabotaged his lectures, sometimes distracting attenders by bringing food and eating during his discussions. Bajanis was also noted for having publicly mocked Alexander the Great. And here we have this painting showing Diogenes sheltering in a barrel. And this painting is by John William Waterhouse. And here we have this man in the middle of the screen dressed in reddish brown colored robe. This one is maybe Plotinus. Plotinus was a major Greek speaking philosopher of the ancient world. In his philosophy, there are three principles, the one, the intellect, and the soul. His teacher was Ammonius Saccas, and he is of the Platonic tradition. Historians of the 19th century invented the term Neoplatonism and applied it to him. And his philosophy, which was influential in late antiquity, much of the biographical information about Plotinus comes from Porphyry's preface to his edition of Plotinus Aeneads. His metaphysical writings have inspired centuries of pagan, Islamic, Jewish, Christian, and Gnostic 
metaphysicians and mystics. And here, this is a marble head broken through neck, lower half of nose and rim of left ear damaged, one of four replicas which were all discovered in Ostia. The identification as Plotinus is plausible but not proven. And here we have, again in the middle of the screen, this leading man with a compass in his hand, making drawings of geometrical patterns. This one is maybe Euclid or Archimedes or Bramante. If he is Euclid, which was sometimes given the name Euclid of Alexandria to distinguish him from Euclides of Megara, was a Greek mathematician about 300 BC, often referred to as the founder of geometry or the father of geometry. He was active in Alexandria during the reign of Ptolemy I, 323 till 283 BC. His Elements is one of the most influential works in the history of mathematics, serving as the main textbook for teaching mathematics, especially geometry from the time of its publication until the late 19th century or early 20th century. In the elements, Euclid deducted the principles of what is now called Euclidean geometry from a small set of axioms. Euclid also wrote works on perspective, conic sections, spherical geometry, number theory, and rigor. And here we have this painting showing Euclid of Alexandria. And if he is Archimedes, Archimedes of Syracuse, about 287 till about 212 BC, was a Greek mathematician physicist, engineer, inventor, and astronomer. Although few details of his life are known, he is regarded as one of the leading scientists in classical antiquity, generally considered the greatest mathematician of antiquity and one of the greatest of all time. Archimedes anticipated modern calculus and analysis by applying concepts of infinitesimals and the method of exhaustion to derive and rigorously prove a range of geometrical theorems, including the area of a circle, the surface area and volume of a sphere, and the area under a parabola. And here we have this painting showing Archimedes thoughtful by Fetti, painted in 1620. And if this man is not Euclid or Archimedes, maybe he is Bramante, Donato Bramante, born in 1444 and died on the 11th of March 1514. Born as Donato di Pascuccio d'Antonio, and also known as Bramante Lazzari, was an Italian architect. He introduced Renaissance architecture to Milan and the High Renaissance style to Rome, where his plan of St. Peter's Basilica formed the basic of design executed by Michelangelo. His Tempietto, San Pietro in Montorio, marked the beginning of the High Renaissance in Rome, 1502. When Pope Julius II appointed him to build 
a sanctuary over the spot where Peter was allegedly crucified. And here we have a portrait of Donato Bramante. And here we have this man in the middle of the screen holding a blue bowl with something like stars in it and he is dressed in white. This one is maybe Strabo or Zoroaster. If he is Strabo, Strabo, which was born 64 or 63 BC and died about 24 AD, he was a Greek geographer, philosopher, and historian who lived in Asia Minor during the transitional period of the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire. And here we have a portrait from the Dibner Library of the History and Science of Technology representing Strabo. And this engraving is dating back to the 16th century. Zoroaster, also known as Zara Tushtra, Spitama, or Ashu Zara Tushtra, was an ancient Iranian speaking prophet whose teachings and innovations on the religion, the religious traditions of ancient Iranian speaking people, developed into the religion of Zoroastrianism. He inaugurated a movement that eventually became the dominant religion in ancient Persia. He was a native speaker of old Avestan and lived in the eastern part of Iranian plateau. But his exact birthplace is uncertain. And here we have this representation showing him. And this in front of us is a 19th century Indian Zoroastrian perception of Zoroaster derived from a figure that appears in a 4th century sculpture at Taj in Bustan in southwestern Iran. The original 4th century high relief scene depicts the investiture of Ardashir II with the figure later perceived to be Zoroaster standing to the left of the king. There's also a third theory suggests that this man is Baldassare Castiglione. Baldassare Castiglione was born in December the 6th, 1478 and died February the 2nd, 1529. Count of Pesatico, and he was an Italian courtier, diplomat, soldier, and a prominent Renaissance author, who is probably most famous for his authorship of the Book of the Courtier. The work was an example of courtesy book, dealing with questions of the etiquette and morality of the courtier and was very influential in the 16th century European court circles. And here we have this portrait of Baldassare Castiglioni by Raphael. It is oil on canvas, dating back maybe to the winter 15, 14, 15, 15. And now it is in the Louvre Museum in France in Paris. And here we have this man dressed in golden dress with a diadem on the head and he has a globe in his hand. This one is Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy was born about 100 AD and died about 170 AD, was a Greek-Roman mathematician, astronomer, geographer, astrologer, and poet of a single epigram in the Greek anthology. He lived in the city of Alexandria in the Roman province of Egypt, wrote in Koine Greek and held Roman citizenship. 
the 14th century astronomer Theodore Meli de Neotis gave his birthplace as a prominent Greek city, Ptolemais Hermio, in the Thebaid. This attestation is quite late, however, and according to Gerald Toomer, the translator of Algamist into English, there is no reason to suppose he ever lived anywhere other than Alexandria. He died there around 168 AD. And here we have this representation of Ptolemy. And it is an early Baroque artist's rendition. And here we have this almost hidden face. This one is maybe representing Apelles of Raphael. Apelles, of course, 4th century BC, was a renowned painter of ancient Greece, Pliny the Elder to whom much of modern scholars' knowledge of this artist is owed Naturalis Historia, rated him superior to preceding and subsequent artists. He dated a police to the 112th Olympiad, 332 to 329 BC, possibly because he had produced a portrait of Alexander the Great. And here we have this sculpture by Nino Pisano, dating back to about between 1334 to 1336. And here we have this man here, dressed in white with a white cap. He is to the extreme right-hand side of the painting. Or or the fresco. This one is maybe Protogenes or Il Sodoma or Timoteo Viti. If he is Protogenes, Protogenes was an ancient Greek painter, a contemporary rival of Elis, as with the other famous ancient Greek painters. None of his work has survived and it is known only from literally references and brief descriptions. He was actually born in the 4th century BC. And here we have this portrait of Protogenes, water, color, and gouache on parchment, and it is now in the National Museum of Stockholm. If he is ill, Sodoma, El Sodoma was born 1477 and died February 14, 1549. El Sodoma was the name given to the Italian Renaissance painter Giovanni Antonio Bassi. El Sodoma painted in a manner that superimposed the high Renaissance style of early 16th century Rome onto the traditions of the provincial Sienza school. He spent the bulk of his professional life in Siena with two periods in Rome. And here we have a self-portrait with badgers in a fresco at Monte Oliveto. And if this man is Timotio Viti. Timotio Viti Orbino was born in 1469 in Orbino and died in 1523 also in Orbino, sometimes called Timotio della Viti or Timotio da Orbino, was an Italian Renaissance painter who was closely associated with Raphael was 14 years his junior. And here we have a self-portrait of Timotio Viti. 